Welcome back. You're watching uh, Markets at Noon on ET. Now, well, let's introduce a very special guest now to talk about a segment that has really been hotting up, and that is technology. Rakil Varek, leader for technology consulting with Deloitte India, joins us now on the show. Uh, good having you uh, with us on Markets at Noon. So, uh, you know, when we talk about technology um, and the kind of wonders it can do for um, companies, for MSMEs as well, um, you know, the bigger companies, uh, most of them have already made significant investments in, um, uh, you know, accumulating data, uh, in artificial intelligence. Now, of course, it's a question of how to best harness the potential uh, that AI data has to offer and all the investments, um, you know, made by these companies in this segment. So how do you propose, um, you know, or how would companies harness the, the potential of AI? Sure. Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure. I think you said it very well. Um, every organization today is harnessing so much of data and artificial intelligence is uh, talk of the town, if you, if you will. You know, uh, but to me, it's all about, all about binding your artificial intelligence and machine learning strategy to your organization vision, to the priorities, to the imperative of your organization. And how do you affect this change to the organization? The nuances of decision support system will be key for sure. But how, how do you continue this insight you are generating is going to be truly the foundation for defining a truly AI field organization is what I think, right? I mean, how do you go from a hindsight to insight to foresight? I mean, we need business orientation. It's not just about a technology platform and start having this conversation. Yes, it is technology, but technology is just an enabler of a business transformation. Right? Many times we just get excited with the shiny objects that we see around us. Uh, you know, let's implement few few models or few bots in our system. But how do you connect all these things across the organization, all the way from your customers to your enterprise to your suppliers, and have a connected ecosystem? And is this a problem worth solving for? Because it, you know, decision support can be an expensive affair. Right? So to me, that is that is probably the number one you know critical priority. And the second, second aspect is, uh, how do you industrialize this AI? You know, uh, sophisticated machine learning models will help you definitely, you know, discover patterns, you know, reveal anomalies, you know, make predictions and decisions, things like that, and generate insights. But there is a need to shift from personal heroics that we're having today to an engineered performance to efficiently move these ML models, the AI models, from a development to a production and management aspect of it, right? So what we call in our language, you know, like, you know, ML ops, just like the concept of DevOps. You now, how do you truly industrialize machine learning models and things like that? Now, ethics becomes another important aspect of it. Ethics and governance of AI framework will be very, very critical considerations you have as you are as you're harnessing the investment you're making on technology platforms and AI. And with machine learning poised to kind of overall the enterprise operations and decision making, legacy data modernization, uh, infrastructure modernization, you know, if you look at all the, the legacy data models, infrastructures, everything was geared towards decision making by humans, not by machines, you know. Now that, now that we have machines making decisions for us, will some of the decisions we have taken in the past, are they going to be in a roadblock for us? So some of those things that we have to consider, you know, to be, to be brutally honest, to get the, the true benefit of the AI or technology platform that you're putting together. Right. Uh, so, you know, how would uh, how the entire COVID episode has actually accelerated this? Do you think everybody who was not being able to do it is now doing it or is forced to do it? Uh, and that's why what was going to take years has, has actually happened in one year. So that has led to more investments? Uh, accelerated digital growth. I mean, you know, we all spoke about digital. We all spoke about, uh, you know, uh, how digital is going to swing every company to digital company. But every adversity teaches us something. You know, COVID pandemic uh, definitely accelerated the growth of digital, growth of all this. Um, you know, if you look at today, schools are from home. You know, your groceries you're ordering from, from your home, or your offices from, from, from home, everything that you're doing, forgetting all those big shop floors, big machine, uh, you know, your, 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 your manufacturing setups are trying to operate their setups remotely from from you know remote locations, so significantly, I think I think COVID had significantly impacted uh, you know this concept of what what I call is uh, digital, uh, physical plus digital world com coming together. You know, in this in this whole world, it's all about how do you personalize you know in in person experience without really sacrificing the conventional online transactions and anywhere anytime models. At the same time, giving a you know touch and feel uh, feel that you get 
on the on, on the real physical environment how do you marry these two together and create a truly truly immersive omni channel experience from the stores the showrooms to the experience in the, the comfort of your bedroom where you're making decisions you know and 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 also how do you really uber personalize this uh, i think covid has taught a lot of this uh, and significantly accelerated this whole automation um, virtualization of uh, physical worlds and i think this is going to be the norm now this is going to be the new normal that we all will be dealing with you know as we look into our future hmm. all right uh, well uh, yeah digital definitely seems to be the future um what about um you know how uh, you know human uh, resources would play a role here or do you think their role will be cut down to the minimum do you think that the kind of technology ai uh, we are adopting could actually reduce um you know the need for dependence on human resources for companies do you see that happening i i do not see uh, you know i do not see the dependency on human completely going away because human as a race we will be there we will you know manage those machines and and machines will however play a very significant role this whole concept of cognitive right how is machines mimicking human behavior yeah there are there are many functions today we do which we potentially can can automate for that matter like say you know let's say your simple checking of certain you know invoices that you have in somebody uh, some human being play like today i'm checking the invoices making sure that's correct or i'm looking at a claim as an insurance company coming in and making sure that all the you know all all the data points are accurate maybe i can take that part of the function and automate it and slowly as you know my my machine my machine becomes more intelligent start learning maybe i'll start introducing more you know more cognitive to it and start machines making decisions now maybe this claim everything is looking good less than 50000 rupees maybe we should you know prove that claim automatically and a human was doing it today and tomorrow machine is doing it in many cases today machine is doing that as well this whole um, whole concept of you know the, the virtual assistants uh, today any time you call into a call center you know the, the virtual assistants are everywhere right so virtualization of a digital workplace and data uh, coming together in the post digital world i think is a natural adjacency that we have created however uh um, you know the, the the challenge that we all all have to do it is 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 human how can we take these individuals and doing certain function and upskill them cross skill them and in use it in a more more meaningful contributing roles is going to be a very very, very relevant conversation let's say out of the 10 invoices maybe there is only three critical invoices that needs the human intervention the other seven would be machine maybe tomorrow out of the seven maybe we do eight out of the 10 from machine and two need human intervention but those human were doing those previously are probably doing you know cross skill off skills are doing for different parts of it so i do not think you can take human out of this equation but i think the humbot the concept of human and bot together you know is probably the future but human is doing one aspect of it bots are doing one aspect of it and together this humbot environment is going to be the the future or already today is uh, is 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 uh, is pretty much in our all right you know uh, this was definitely very insightful and i'm sure the corporates as well listening to you would have got quite a direction of how uh, they could see technology as well changing things their operations or rather how they should uh, be going about it thank you so much rakesh for joining in and on that note we'll take a very short break on the show but more exclusive stories and conversations lined up don't go